Hello, my name is Janice B. Gordon. This is Scale Your Sales Podcast. Welcome to the Scale Your Sales Podcast, listed number nine of 42 best podcasts for every sales professional in 2021. I am Janice B. Gordon, the customer growth expert, recommended by LinkedIn as one of 15 innovative sales influencers to follow in 2021. In this episode of Scale Your Sales podcast, my guest is a master in storytelling and goes into the sales process and each of the stages how you can create stories to engage your customer and it helps to move them on to the next stage of the sales process. So it was really enlightening. You're going to love this. So my next guest is a keynote speaker and storyteller consultant who helps B2B sales teams sell more with story. So welcome to Scale Your Sales podcast, Ravi Ranjani. Welcome to Scale Your Sales podcast, Ravi Ranjani. Hi, how are you doing? First of all, what I want to cover with you is storytelling and how you help sales teams increase their revenue through storytelling, how you get them way away from the features and benefits. Tell me all about that. Have we got four hours? Yeah, yeah. we got four hours. Pull let, up let, me the seat. <laughs> let me give you a seat. Let me give you a snippet here. Let's start with, I suppose, step one. Now, most people think when they hire me to come and speak to their company or they follow my content on LinkedIn, whatever, they go, okay, we need to craft a story and we need to, you know, embed this into our sales process. And then we need to teach people how to deliver it. And yeah, yeah, that's cool. But here's the thing a lot of us miss and we're all victims of, Janice. Maybe you can relate to it. I know I can. But sometimes active listening is a hard thing to do. So how do we know the right story to tell to the right person if we aren't truly listening to them? So I was on the Challenger podcast a little while ago, and I said, here's an exercise that people can do with their teams, okay? Get somebody up on stage virtually, okay, or in person. Get them up in front of the team to talk about something that they're passionate about outside of the workplace, something that they're excited about for 45 to 60 seconds, okay? Then the rest of the team have to focus on actively listening because then what they're going to do is have to recap and summarize in less than 60 seconds what they heard so do they use similar language do they make the person feel seen heard and understood when they're talking about their passion projects and all these different things so when you truly understand how to actively listen then you can embed the storytelling inside of the sales process and my framework is the story selling framework which is what i use but hey what do you think do you know you're absolutely right i was interviewed yesterday on uh, someone else's podcast and we uh, were talking about public speaking so as a professional uh, public speaker fellow of psa and um like many of my my experiences and we were talking about the difference between men and women and the way that we communicate and i can't remember what the question was but it really did touch on when i was talking about women are often better at listening actively listening and part of communicating and being uh, a speaker is not just about communicating because you can't communicate really well if you haven't listened and understanding other picking up on people's nuances the body language the temperature of the room and all all of that so I absolutely agree with you part of communication an important part of communication is actively listening listening to the body language is the nuances the tone and all of that and then you can reflect it back and then it's a lot easier for people to receive the information because they've received it in their own language yeah i'm totally with you on that janice uh, i'll give you an example when i go in to speak to a team i get them to fill out a brief survey and from that i look at my story bank and i'm like which stories am i going to put in this keynote which stories am i going to put in this workshop but if i think i know what they want already i'm going to miss the mark because my ego is saying you already know them rav you already know exactly what they want when the truth is is that's not true not true how do you collate all of these stories that you can then pick off and say, well, which one would relate better to this audience, to this customer? 
how do you start to collate those types of because we've got stories all the time all the time that in our daily lives it's those little stories you know the conversation at the shop and all of that that makes it relatable but how do you learn to collate all of those and not miss them and I will answer that question. Uh, I think the first thing to actually think about is what is a story in a sales context? And we can go into that a little bit deeper if you'd like to, but there's a difference between this one time at band camp and you're sitting around a fire and you're sharing stories with friends. Sharing stories in a sales context is very, very different and requires a slightly different skill set, but we can go into that. Once you grasp that, the idea then is, is which different stories can you embed at different points in the sales process now there are so many as you already know Janice there's so many different stories you can tell but I'll give you a few to think about here now the first is a connection focused story now that can take part in various forms but one of them is think about the first 90 seconds of a sales call how many times in the UK do we always go well how's the weather down there where you are right versus tell a connection focused story which gets somebody to know you personally and gets them to exchange a story in return so that's one type of story the second type of story is a trusted advisor story now the idea here is to really cement that doctor patient relationship and talk about in a consultative way what you're seeing in the market at the moment in terms of different trends your belief as to what's going to happen and really illuminate the villain in the eyes of your prospect because hold on do they really know that the problem they have actually exists do they know the magnitude of it and do they really see you as the doctor? So it's about having that consultative conversation and having a unique point of view. Then we've got, for example, the customer success story. Everybody loves a customer success story. And that's what most salespeople think about when they think of storytelling. It's an amazing trust accelerator, which allows your prospects to see themselves in the main character of the journey and hopefully choose you as their Yoda, right? Another story is the why we're different story. That could be the founder story. That could be your unique method story, a product story. But instead of saying we're different from our competition because show them through story. Okay, then we've got an objection handling story, getting people to handle objections. When I say people, salespeople, getting them to handle objections through storytelling before they arise. And then the final one to think about in general is the cost of inaction story, right? Painting a vivid picture to your prospect about what it's going to look like if they don't solve their problem or they do and getting them to move to a place where, whether it's with you or somebody else, getting them to move to a place where they take a micro step to solving their problem. I really love how you've broken down the sales process all into stories, <laughs> you yeah. know, like, and so that you have all of all of these stories that you've practiced and you can readily pull out. And people remember stories more than they remember facts and figures and so forth. But explain to me the connection story. What what do you mean by that? Because I think that would be quite new to the listeners. What you would do with that in order to make the connection. Okay, let me give you an example. Um, I was recently speaking in Vegas, probably about in April. Came back and I was exhausted. Okay, so I hop on a sales call. I was jet lagged. The eight hour time difference got me, Janice. So I'm on a, I'm on a sales call and somebody says, oh, uh, I say, hey, Janice, how are you doing? You're automatically going to say, yeah, I'm good. How are you? Most likely you're going to say something about how you're feeling. Then you're going to say, how are you? Because that's just etiquette. And I'm going to say, you know what? I'm absolutely exhausted. And then you're like, oh, I didn't expect that. It's a little bit unpredictable because you're expecting, I'm good, thank you. So why are we here today, right? And then you go, why are you exhausted? Well, I'm like, it's crazy. I just came back from Vegas. Awful, awful jet lag with an eight hour time difference. But I was training a crunch base, a sales team over there. And they had their SKO in Vegas. And it was so awesome but the jet lag completely crushed me but you know what when you're doing something you truly love it doesn't really feel like work you know what i'm saying but actually segues nicely into why we're here today to talk about training your sales team on all things storytelling so what i wanted to talk about today was bang 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 so that's a really quick example and it definitely could be better but the exact idea here is to share something which connects into 
why they're here today and also give them a glimpse of what you do or i could have talked about something personal which happened today where i don't know you forgot your alarm right and it ruined the rest of your day and when you don't have the right infrastructure in your day-to-day -day life everything collapses and if that's what you do as a salesperson, you're helping people embed IT infrastructure. You could say, well, hey, and that's why we're here today to talk about your infrastructure inside of your company. And they're going to go, oh, my God, that happens to me all the time. I always forget my alarm or whatever it could be. So, so, th so this is your sharing something of your personality to the client as opposed rather than the connection. So they can see you as a human rather than the connection is about drawing out something about their personality or something about them. Is that correct? That's the way around this connection is. The goal is twofold here, is to be seen as a human being, to lead with emotion, which truthfully, actually the first three I told you didn't do, but lead with emotion, but also have them exchange a story in return. That's like the key. That's like the holy grail when somebody exchanges a story in return. Right. I, in all of the storytelling, if they then you get them to respond to it. Yes. I mean, like there's so many different ways you can have somebody share a story. Like, for example, Janice, I could ask you, um, how long have you been struggling with this problem? And you'll say, <laughs> five years, eight years. And that's not a bad question. There's a time and place for it. But if I asked you a question of, can you tell me a little bit about the moment, Janice, when you realized this was a huge problem for you? You're now going to think of a story because it's an open-ended question. But if I asked you, if I asked you, Janice, to share a story with me, most people would get stuck in analysis paralysis because they go, I don't have a story. So don't say, can you ask, can you share a story? Because most people believe they don't have one. Yeah, yeah interesting absolutely love it because I, I i love the the fact that you have these different kind of stages and stories with each of, of those stages absolutely fascinating telling the story creates that that uh warmth and that that connection and it's something it becomes more memorable so this must heighten the experience that the customer has with you with the whole sales process that you're taking them through so what do you say is the impact of that and the ultimate goal is the sale so for me it's the interesting thing is the way i like to think about it is regardless win the relationship whether you win the deal or not win the relationship because here's the thing Today, imagine there's 10 to 50 to hundreds of people doing exactly what you do. What separates you is your unique method to generate results, that proprietary process, that vehicle that you have to take somebody from pain to glory, and also the stories that you tell and the experience that somebody has with you, the way that you make them feel and the way that you show up. Now, storytelling makes everything human, in my opinion. And yes, okay, it's great when these stories accelerate trust. OK, they fuse a connection and somebody chooses you as their guide to solve their problem. But win the relationship because relationship currency is the key, especially in the world that we live in today, because that can result in way more than business. It doesn't, doesn't mean you're going to close a deal today. You may. But imagine if they introduce you to somebody or in a year's time, they are ready to make a buying decision because their intent is higher. So it's, it's, it's not just for me. It's like the deal is a yeah, great but winning the relationship is way bigger. But that requires people to think long-term. And in today's world, we don't often want to do that. We want instant gratification. Yeah, yeah. And I, that's what I was going to go on to, to talk about, that the most characterful people, the most memorable people are those are natural storytellers because that's why you think they're characterful. They've got, they easily share their personality, their humor. What is their essential self? That's the point. Why is it that in the sales industry over the years, a lot of that has been knocked out and that the, it seems to be very process driven? Why do you think that has happened? And it's great that you're trying to pull that, that back in. What's your, your experience? Because I know that you, you worked in FX and so you were very much in kind of traditional, very salesy type of environment. As you said, I've had experience in corporate sales 
in foreign exchange, but also early stage startups and building teams there and then working with companies now. And I'd say the answer, I could give you a hundred answers, but the one that immediately comes to mind, which I'd like to focus on is in the noisy world we live in today, there's a lot of infobesity, meaning we can consume information on podcasts, LinkedIn, everywhere. And I think it can often cloud our decision-making as to what's actually right for us, the context of our team, the context of our product, how we go about building relationships, meaning people have been successful with podcasts and generating leads. People have been successful with cold calling. People have been successful with uh, content marketing. People have been successful in all of those areas, but is that strategy right for you? And I think often what we can do is not listen to our inner voice as a leader and just go, oh my God, this person, they're crushing it on TikTok. Let's go and create a ton of videos for TikTok. That's great. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but is it right in the context of you, the clients that you serve and all that good stuff? So for me, I love all this information that we've got, but I have to be selective because otherwise you drown out your own inner voice. But more importantly, you've got to be careful about who you listen to. You've got to be very careful about what you absorb. So choose those people wisely. Yeah, yeah. So how does it work as a team when you're training on um, the hero story and the sales process? How does it work? Do, do the individuals create their own stories of connection, their own stories of objection? Or does it... Do you have it as a team stories that people can select from? The way I like to focus on it, Janice, is I like to think about it like each team having a story library or a story bank, right? Now, this could be split up by ICP, by a persona and the different types of stories that we shared that you can execute at different points of the sales process and then understanding the triggers of when to actually share them and how to embed them. But what I like to focus on giving people an understanding of what storytelling is in a sales context, giving them the idea of what these stories are and different scripts and templates, because I feel like it starts with understanding a framework, having freedom in the framework, breaking it and creating your own. But what I like to do is give people ways to think about it, examples, and give them variables that they can switch out. Okay, I need to switch this out for my ICP. I can have freedom here and add personalization. So there's framework, but there's freedom within it. Then once they go out there with the MVP story and test it, the idea is this didn't work for me. Oh, actually this did. Now I'm going to create my own as to what contextually works. So my goal is to ensure that salespeople bring their authentic personality and true selves to the table versus feeling rigid and like, oh, this feels awkward for me. But you've got to start with the framework. Yeah. So tell us a bit more about your framework then. So my framework is the story selling framework. Now, story is the acronym, right? I love a good acronym, Janice, right? So uh, story stands for S, which is simplify story selling so that's really getting to grips with what storytelling is in a sales context t is tactically create a story bank so once you understand that it's about creating a story bank for your organization and embedding that into the sales process o is obtain delivery mastery so it's not just because you've got the story doesn't mean you know as a speaker you can have the greatest story in the world but if you can't deliver it with impact <clears throat> It's going to flop, right? So you need to obtain delivery mastery. R is ramp and iterate with the MVP story. So that's going over a 30-day period and really taking it to market, figuring out what works and what doesn't. And then Y is yield long-term success through sales metrics, such as increasing ACV or reducing the sales cycle and driving win rate. So that's really hooking success to what the organization wants because I focus on a very clear ROI. I don't want somebody to just come in and go, oh, that was such a feel good training. Now what, right? We need more than that. We need some tactical stuff. So that's my uh, framework. Excellent, excellent, love that. Okay, so let's switch it up a little bit. We were talking before we recorded about um, diversity. Yeah. Um, Tell me more about your experience of, of working in sales in, in the UK and whether the organizations you go into, which certainly been through, you know, an enlightening time, shall I say, over the last um, three years. 
So, you know, the stats in sales and the uh, diversity haven't really changed. You know, the number of women in sales uh, leadership, it hasn't changed significantly. And, you know, from a diversity point of view, the figures are, are really very, very poor. So what is your view? What do you think is progress? What do you think needs, still needs to be done? Do you mean for me as a speaker and trainer when I go in for keynotes and training? Or do you mean when I was actually in the startup and corporate world? What I mean is I'm, I'm interested in uh, your experience of being in the sales industry. So initially you were working in the industry, but now you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're providing a service to the industry. So over a period of time, you would have seen some changes. So it could be in terms of your audience, who's in front of your audience has that change. It could be the organizations you go into, whether you see that there has been changes. What I'm saying is that the figures haven't changed significantly over the last 10, 20 years. And the, um, the impact is that we know that diverse teams are more profitable. And we're looking at sales revenue, success, sales success. So if the, the dynamics of the team hasn't changed, the makeup of the team hasn't changed, I'm asking you in your view, if you feel that this is a problem and what needs to be done. And if you've got any personal experiences in this. Oh, it's a problem like period. And I, and I would be shocked if anybody said that they didn't think it was a problem, but then uh, there's a difference between saying it's a problem and then actually doing something about it. Like you'll see a lot of posts on LinkedIn talking about, why we need more diverse sales teams, et cetera. But who is actually, take a look at their team, take a look at the way they show up, take a look at their the way that they hire, all that good stuff, and you'll see some differences. But what's interesting is when I was uh, in sales leadership, my team, I think we had 10 to 12 different nationalities in the team, like maybe even more. It was incredible. It was so cool, but everyone just gelled. It was just like... It was so dope. It was so cool. Um, and even I was coach, I was in New York last week and I was training a team over there. Now they've got very diverse team and that's very intentional by the leader. And as a result, they're going on to build a world-class team. So I think that not having a diverse team actually does you a disservice in so many ways of being able to connect with customers in different ways, being able to have different points of view in the organization. Because I think some people believe that it's about having people who think, act, and look the same way as you, like having mini me's and clones of like the top producers. But for me, it's about having people who share the same value system. You just want, but yeah, you want people with different opinions from different backgrounds and all that good stuff because, hey, that's where real connection lies. And that's what storytelling, going back to that, is all about, right? Connection. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting you said in your team, when you were a sales leader, that there was such a diversity of nationalities. There are, there's, um, uh, um, I don't know if it's Gartner's or, or Forrester's that said, when you have a, a senior female sales leader, they will naturally attract and recruit a diverse team. Yeah. So I'm thinking, well, it's probably because, you, you know, your nationality made people feel safe that this is a diverse organization. If you're recruiting them, then they're more likely to want to come uh, and work for you. So I think, you know, like if there's major changes at, at the top, then there's going, that's going to filter down through, through the organization. So I really um, um, love what you, you said, uh, that, you know, there needs to be changes here. Okay, so let me ask you, what's one tried and tested strategy you would offer listeners to enable them to scale their sales? And I think I know what the answer might be here. You know what I'm going to say. <laughs> there, there, there's, there's a lot of things that I don't focus on because I stay in my lane, you know. I stay in my lane of storytelling. And I would say, look, if this sounds overwhelming to you, right now the different stories and how to embed them in your discovery and demo i hear you it can be and i think the first step for anybody 
is actually having an awareness about what storytelling is and gaining a belief that it's actually going to work for them and their organization. Because I think there is a movement where people go, you know what? I like this whole storytelling thing, but the execution is off by most, right? Here's my belief, Janice. Everybody is a speaker. Everybody is a salesperson and everybody is a storyteller. Okay. Now the third thing I think sales leaders need to grasp, own it and start building a culture of storytelling inside of the organization. And the one thing you can do, right, simply is that little nugget that we shared at the beginning, that active listening exercise. But before you even go about crafting stories, why not try to get customers to share stories? Yes, it could be through sharing your personal story, but asking an open-ended question. Try that. See if they actually give you a story in return. And if they do, you're going to be like, hmm, maybe this storytelling thing has some legs. And then, hey, you're going to be listening to this whole podcast again or trying to learn more about storytelling, I'm sure. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. So if you're on a desert island on your own, oh, what's the one thing you would take with you, Raj? It's one thing. You know what? You won't believe this. I was asked this, Janice, on a podcast like a month ago or when this comes out a few months ago. And somebody said, you're on an island. You can only take your wife, your dog or Kevin Hart because everybody knows I'm obsessed with Kevin Hart. And I was like, yeah, Kevin Hart. And the, the, the lady was like, really? You wouldn't take your wife? I was like, listen, it's 12 weeks. I, like I would learn so much about storytelling with Kevin Hart and build a relationship. <laughs> my wife, I can come back to her and my dog. Um, people were like, what? So what would I take? My phone, because I can still update people on LinkedIn. I can still FaceTime my wife. I can still watch Kevin on YouTube. Um, that is the probably the worst answer because everyone's like, oh, he'd take his phone. But it would still allow me to do so much more. I could even train teams there and still do keynotes. So, hey, let's take my phone. Let's All right. Phone. All right. You've got your phone. You've got your All one right. item. How can listeners get hold of you? Oh, OK. So I would say the place where I hang out the most is LinkedIn. So... Check me out, Ravi Rajani. I, I respond to DMs and all that good stuff. I'm posting content every single day. So yeah, drop me a connection request. And I've also got my own podcast called The Influential Communicator, which is all about effective communication and storytelling for being a better salesperson. So yeah, go check that out. But yeah, those are the two key mediums. Excellent. Well, thank you for being a guest on Scale Your Sales podcast, Ravi Rajani. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Scale Your Sales podcast. If you like this discussion, feel free to listen to other episodes or watch the caption show on YouTube and subscribe to future episodes. I would really appreciate it if you would leave a positive review on iTunes. Thank you.